Um, our next panel um, kind of goes at kind of the heart of uh, how we viewed this conference was whoever came up with the title state of the mobile net was kind of an idiot. Like, well, is there any difference between the mobile net, the regular internet, and, and just our, the way we operate our lives generally? Um, and so we've been struggling with that over the years about whether there's any difference between uh, the mobile internet and how you access the internet in other ways. Um, but regardless, and that's like, going to be the subject of the next, next, next panel that we're going to work on privacy. Um, to kick things off, I'd like to introduce uh, Congressman Hank Johnson He's from the 4th Congressional District. Um, has probably one of the best staff up on Capitol Hill, um, as, as, as you may well know. Uh, the Congressman is a self-described friend of apps and apps developers alike. Um, he, uh, the Congressman has been extremely active on on internet issues since joining the Judiciary Committee. And, and interestingly enough, when I first started um, at this job several years ago, like 14 years ago, um, it seemed like a lot of the locus of these issues was in the Commerce Committee. Um, the judiciary was also very important, but it seems like it is certainly equal, if not you know, more activity in the Judiciary Committee now than in the Commerce Committee. And that's really interesting. And it's folks like uh, Congressman Hank Johnson and, and Congressman Jason Chaffetz and our co-chair, of course, Congressman Malva Goodlatt, you know, doing a lot of that work. So it's really exciting to see the, the shift over the years. Um, the, the congressman um, is going to come up and make some remarks. And, and just his background, um, he practiced um, um, civil and criminal law for about 27 years back in the district. Um, so the congressman knows quite a bit about uh, criminal civil law um, and operates out of the Judiciary Committee and is very active and a good friend of the caucus. So uh, welcome, Congressman Hank Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I, is anybody here familiar with the uh, with the uh, turtle on the fence post You're riding through the uh, riding through town or riding through the country actually on a two two lane road uh, and just fencing as far as the eye can see and then you look over to your right and you see a turtle on the fence pole. You all familiar with that? That, so the principle, uh, how did that turtle get there? Well, did he get there by himself? Well, I think that's a good way of looking at uh, Hank Johnson. Hank Johnson is a turtle on the, on the <laughs> fence post. And you wonder, well, why is, how did that turtle get up there? And so that, that's the uh, analogy that I want to make today with me being before all of these uh, tech gurus and uh, including uh, Slade Bond from my staff. Let's give him a hand, by the way, for, <clears throat> for putting me on that uh, fence post. Thank you for your applause. Good morning, everybody. This is... Uh, uh, I appreciate this opportunity for, uh, to address you. And um, basically, uh, SOPA and CISPA have been game changers uh, in our legislative arena. Um, you, as uh, uh, people who are in this industry, have uh, made your, uh, made your dissatisfaction with the process known and uh, the situation with SOFA and how it developed and how that uh, fast moving freight train going downhill was uh, stopped in its tracks uh, it was indeed an eye opening uh, experience <coughs> and uh, it, uh, it, it, it set a new agenda for how we deal with uh, issues uh, in this domain. Uh, since the widespread outage and backlash against SOPA and CISPA, we've learned that when it comes to the digital ecosystem, there is a sustained and vigorous opposition to top-down legislation. The groundswell to stop SOPA wasn't about saving video clips of cute cats playing the piano, although I'm glad that we did. <laughs> the uh, renewed activism that was placed or levied against CISPA was uh, not only about stopping Big Brother or preventing a surveillance state. No, this activism 
was the spark of a permanent movement against opaque policy making. It was a clarion call for members of Congress to open their doors before making policies on technology and the internet to reach out to the internet community and other stakeholders through a bottom-up process. And I have been uh, privileged at being that turtle on the fence post uh, to carry the torch. I know that looks funny, a turtle on a fence post with a torch. But we've carried uh, the torch on app rights. Since I opposed uh, both SOPA and CISPA, I knew that these bills provided a teachable moment on how we should approach policy that affects the internet and technology. Policy making ought to be guided by transparency and accountability. So last June, seven months ago, actually uh, more than seven months, uh, June, 11 months ago, uh, we launched App Rights. Uh, it's an open, bottom-up approach to drafting legislation that will protect the privacy of mobile device users. I asked what people thought what they value and what rights they think we, we should protect under the law. After an open and honest dialogue, I wrote the Apps Act based on the thoughts and values of the people who weighed in through app rights. The overwhelming majority of the feedback on app rights confirmed that Congress should act to protect consumers' privacy on mobile devices. These engaged citizens also wanted simple controls over privacy on devices, security to prevent data breaches, and notice and information about data collection on the device. So this app act is actually a demonstration of uh, internet activism. The apps act would require that app developers give effective notice about data collection and obtain consent from consumers before collecting personal data. Trust in the mobile marketplace is crucial to its continued growth, and transparency is the cornerstone of this trust. The Apps Act would also require that developers securely maintain personal data, and it would give consumers a clear way to permanently delete their personal data once they stop using a device or it's an app. To ensure that this is a bill that doesn't legislate user interface or cause notice fatigue, and uh, I was just looking at uh, the, uh, I was uh, getting an updated app uh, this afternoon, uh, and there is a new policy, uh, and it's a 54-page policy, so I'm in the process of going through that. Um, <laughs> And uh, fortunately, I know which section is most, uh, most important, so I don't have to become an expert at the whole thing. But uh, this, uh, we certainly don't want to uh, weigh our consumers down with too much information. But uh, the information that, we, uh, that, uh, that must be in those agreements is crucial. Um, to ensure that this is a bill that doesn't legislate user interface, um, I've worked closely with developers and stakeholders like the App Developers Alliance, one of our panelists uh, that are here today. The Apps Act would protect consumers without disrupting functionality or innovation through a safe harbor and other mechanisms to promote trust through regulation. And uh, the safe harbor provision uh, is a great opportunity for uh, folks in the industry to accomplish what uh, it, it could be very difficult for legislators to legislate. And uh, self-regulation is, is, is uh, going to be a part uh, of this as we move forward. And so today I'm proud to announce that I introduced H.R. 1913, the Apps Act. And I want to thank Representative Steve Shabbat for his original co-sponsorship, making this bipartisan uh, 
a bipartisan piece of legislation. And I look forward to working closely with other members to move this, uh, this forward. And I can tell you that there are many uh, on the Republican side of the aisle who are uh, interested and um, willing to be a part of this. And I look forward to more of them, uh, as well as Democrats, becoming uh, co-sponsors on this. Why mobile privacy? Today's panel will take up that important question. Is mobile privacy different, or should we wait for comprehensive privacy reform? In the past six months, more companies are looking to mobile as the future of media. This year, Facebook is set to become a mobile-first company, and it now has 751 million active users on its mobile platform. And although the promise of technology is immense for everyone, as the Pew Internet and American Life Project reports, fewer minorities have access to broadband internet at home than any other demographic. More than half of cell internet users who are black do most of their online browsing on their telephone, which is twice the proportion of cell internet users who are white. Two in five Latino cell phone internet users also fall into the, ca the category of uh, cell mostly. The digital divide means that minorities are more likely to access the internet from a mobile device than from a stationary computer. This is especially true of uh, low-income minorities. Simple tasks become much more difficult on a smaller screen. Complex tasks like understanding how an app collects or uses data, what data is being collected, and whether you can opt out becomes nearly impossible. Trying to read that 53 pages on my, uh, on my phone, is uh, that's tough going. Uh, so in conclusion, um, let's move forward together. We've arrived at a point of inflection on internet activism. Does activism mean that taking a stand against bad legislation, or does it mean something more? I believe that it's time to build something. Internet activism can't be myopic or a one-dimensional uprising against emerging threats. We need to build protections into the technologies that we use, and we need privacy legislation that works for us. Privacy is an issue that should unite us and not drive us apart. It's time to build something. Today's panel will explore this important issue in a discussion on the state of mobile privacy. Should it be treated differently? I want to thank uh, the Congressional Internet Caucus Advisory Committee for assembling a diverse group of speakers, and I'm happy to leave you in the good hands of the moderator, Heather Fetterman, uh, you, from Hunter. the Future of uh, Privacy Forum. Uh, Heather, and thank you.